Hey fellow potatoes, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to explore how playing video games can actually make you a much better writer. Crazy, I know, the fever dream of man and potato alike. Despite how cinematic video games have become in recent years, they still get a pretty bad rap in the film and TV world as being this lowbrow, cheap, mindless entertainment that caters to teenage boys. Which is unfortunate because video games as a medium have some pretty significant advantages as far as narrative storytelling potential that film and TV can only dream of. So if you are a writer of the screen for film and television, this video is for you. And maybe by the end of the video, you might also be intrigued enough to apply your skills to the world of video game writing as I am currently working towards. But even if you don't, even if you only remain in the film and TV world, I'm going to hopefully convince you why it's worth your time to invest into playing video games anyways as a way of improving your writing skills. I'm going to cover five main things that playing video games will help you improve on as a writer. Not to say that these are the only five things, but these five will give you a pretty clear idea of how writing with a video game mindset, quote unquote, vastly differs from writing with a traditional film and TV mindset. The difference between film and TV versus video games are that film and TV are passive engagement versus video games, which are active engagement. In a video game, the audience controls the character. There is a far more visceral connection to the main character, hero, protagonist, than there is with film and TV. And that will be important for where we're going with this. So the five main things you'll improve greatly upon by playing video games is number one, the concept, coming up with stronger concepts for your stories. Number two, writing in external and specific goals. Number three, conflict selection or strategic character and story design. Number four, world building skills. And number five, writing to your fan base, writing in a way that you don't pull your punches, that you hit your concept and premise hard, fast, and often. So let's start with number one, the concept. If you're a screenwriter for film and TV, especially if you're a more intuitive writer like I was, the reason you probably got into writing was for the characters, the dialogue, the subtext, the moments, the, the emotions. It's all the stuff that makes the story meaningful to you. But concept is what makes the story interesting to others. It's the hook, the twist, the thing that grabs the audience's attention and gets them to say, oh, that's interesting, tell me more. Lower concept character dramas are especially abundant in the indie film world. They're highly execution dependent, and I'll tell you from first-hand experience, it is an extreme uphill battle getting an audience invested into those types of stories, especially today. Not that they can't be compelled by the great witty dialogue and so forth, but as you've probably heard me say on this channel many times before, perhaps annoyingly, we live in a world with too much content. There are too many video games, too many movies, too many TV shows, and they're all competing against each other on a global scale. I think Netflix releases a new movie every 47 seconds or so, and there's no way for any of us to watch it all. High concept or higher concept, heightened concept, in addition to pitch perfect authentic execution, is what's going to make your story stand out. Video games are highly concept driven by nature, they're also highly story worlds driven by nature, more on that later. A video game that's a character drama about a father trying to reconnect with his estranged daughter, maybe you'd watch that as a film or a TV show, but I can almost guarantee you now that that premise as a video game will bore you to tears. That's not to say that that relationship, that emotion, that character drama isn't interesting. It's just that it hasn't yet been packaged into a concept that can get a total stranger to leap out of their chair and say, oh, I want to know more. But a story about a father trying to survive a post-zombie apocalypse and reconnect with an estranged surrogate daughter that he meets along the way whose blood happens to contain the cure for this zombie outbreak, Okay, now I'm intrigued. That same father-daughter drama, that same compelling emotional resonance, packaged in a concept that complete strangers who don't know anything about your story or what you're going for can instantly connect to. Silent Hill, Resident Evil Village, God of War, Returnal, Final Fantasy X and XV, I would even say Mortal Kombat to a degree, are all games with notable parent-children dramas at their core. And the more you play video games, the more you'll train your brain to start thinking in terms of the concept, the hook, the angle, and dare I say it, the gimmick. Number two, writing in external and specific goals. This is something that I am still amazed to this day by how many film and television writers still struggle with. A goal 
is what the character is trying to achieve. And from my experience as a script reader, and I was guilty of this as well for a time, when I ask a writer, what's the main objective, the main goal this character is trying to achieve in this story? I'd say a good 60 to 70% of writers wouldn't even have an external specific goal. They'd have goals like to win their father's love or learning to forgive their best friend or go forward in life in a way that's spiritually satisfying. I didn't need to know anything more about their story to know that it fails. And again, I'm not saying that those internal emotional goals aren't interesting or compelling. It's just that they haven't yet been externalized and made specific. If you are such a writer, playing video games is, in my experience, one of the single best ways, most efficient ways to retrain your brain to think in terms of external and specific goals. So imagine that your character were a character in a video game and you were controlling this character and the video game gives you an objective to complete and you must complete this objective to get past this part of the game, to get to the next level. And the objective is win your father's respect. You'd probably be sitting there scratching your head thinking, well, what does that mean as far as actually accomplishing something in the game? Do I chat with my father NPC character and get him to say, I respect you? Do I get him to give me a firm handshake? Do I win a race to prove that I'm worthy of his respect? What the hell am I supposed to do? And before you know it, very quickly, you will get very frustrated by that game because you're confused. Win your father's respect could mean just about anything. It's not external and specific enough. Now, if the game instead gave you the goal, hunt the deer. In other words, kill the deer and bring it home. Okay, now that's a goal you can quantifiably accomplish and you'll know when you're successful or not. And yes, the reason, the internal emotional reason behind it all is because you want to prove to your father that you're worthy to fight alongside him to gain his respect. Video games by design are driven by external specific goals. Save Princess Zelda, defeat Dr. Wily, eliminate all the Metroids, hold off the zombie horde until help arrives, scatter your wife's ashes on the tallest mountain in all the realms, eat all of the white pellets on the stage without getting killed to get to the next level. And the more you play video games, the more this will become second nature. Because video games, since their inception, were for the most part developed for an international market, and thus they needed to be designed in a way that doesn't rely on cultural nuances in order to get engaged with it. And that means creating goals that are external, specific, and most importantly, simple. Escape the house, find my daughter, turn on the radio, climb the ladder, defeat Sephiroth. These are not complicated goals. They don't require very much context to understand. And the more you train to write this way, the sharper, crisper, and more interesting your stories will become. Number three, improved character and story design. This is one of those things that I was taught while training in screenwriting for film and television, but wasn't something that I truly understood as clearly as I do now until I started playing more video games. One of the key skill sets in creating compelling conflicts, questions, dialogue, etc. is something called conflict selection. Conflict selection is strategically designing your conflicts and more importantly, choosing the correct characters in a way that will maximize the experience you're trying to deliver to your audience. So let me give you an example. Say you have a simple one to two page scene, a short self-contained film between two characters, a husband and a wife. And the wife's goal is to get the husband to agree to a divorce and the husband refuses. And let's say you decided that the experience you want to give the audience is that these are the last two people that should ever be married. Their marriage isn't working. They're from two completely different worlds. After five years, she thought that she could make it work, but she can't. He's just so wrong for her. What most screenwriters, not all, but what most screenwriters will do is they'd have a husband and wife in the bedroom where the wife is unloading her grievances and the husband is pleading with her, no, 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 I don't want a divorce, I love you. And a lot of the conflict will unfold in dialogue where the wife gives this long monologue about why they're so incompatible, why they're the last couple that should ever be married, how it was doomed from the start. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with the setup, but what you'll probably notice is that you've just spent a lot of time unloading a bunch of context to get that conflict to work. Essentially, you've put the bulk of your time trying to execute the hell out of the scene. When what you should have done instead is front load a lot of your time into the design and then let the design do all the hard work for you. So this couple is the last couple that should ever get married. They are fundamentally incompatible and you need to 100% convince the audience of this. Rather than trying to execute all this with a bunch of dialogue, redesign the scene, redesign the characters, make the wife 
let's say, a police officer and make the husband an ex-convict in the middle of doing some ex-convict things that could land him right back in the jail. But take it a step further. What if the wife were an operating system and the husband is a lonely computer programmer a la the movie Her? But don't just stop there. Make the relationship at the design level even more incompatible. What if the wife were God and the husband were the devil? Video games don't have the luxury of relying on dialogue to get their point across. It needs to pull you into the game, into the conflict, into the meaty bits right away. So if two characters are meant to hate each other, if video games not going to spend 10 minutes explaining why they hate each other when all that can be done at a glance, one character can be the element of fire and the other character is the element of water. Instantly at a glance without knowing anything else, an audience will immediately get it. And if a character badly wants water, for example, the game isn't going to overload you with dialogue. It'll make the character a mermaid stranded in the middle of the desert. Now you might be thinking, that's so on the nose, that's so ridiculous, that's artificial and unbelievable. Yes, that's the point. The point is to train yourself to think in this manner. To first front load the time you spend on design to make everything about your story crystal clear and in the most efficient way possible. Then of course, you're gonna to want to execute the hell out of it in a way that is organic and believable. From my experience, I will say that almost no one is naturally good at this but it is built into the video game experience by design. And the more you play video games, the more you'll sharpen your instincts when it comes to conflict selection and designing your characters and story in a way that the design is doing all the heavy lifting, which is ultimately less stress on you when it comes to execution down the road. Number four, world building skills. As I stated in a previous video, a story world is at the heart of a video game. Video games don't need stories, but they absolutely need a story world. A video game without a story world is just a bunch of pixels and polygon assets. The world wasn't as important in film and TV about 10 to 15 years ago, but it's absolutely crucial now in today's transmedia saturated landscape. Story world can be either a setting, which is the geographic location the story takes place in, or it can be a verse of characters or both. Video games almost always have both, and playing them will get you to think in terms of needing both. Think of the Spielberg movies of the 80s that were set in the suburbs that was basically a placeholder for the San Fernando Valley or Chicago or New York. Those movies were generic on purpose, but Story World is your brand, your IP. Think of your Story World as its own distinct character. There's a tactileness with the Story World that you get when you play a video game just by its very immersive nature. Sex in the City, The Nick, Gotham, Sweeney Todd, Parasite Eve, Gangs of New York, all take place in New York, but they are all very different versions of New York. Destroy All Humans, Duke Nukem, Fallout, Vampire, The Masquerade, Twisted Metal, La La Land, they all take place in Los Angeles, but they're all a very different version of Los Angeles. Since I made a separate video on this already, I'll just leave a link to it in the description below. Let me just add one last little bit as far as story worlds. Even if you consider your story a one-off script, story design becomes so much easier once you've fleshed out the world. This includes the chronology of events, the history, the customs, the social classes, the characters of your world. Think of story world work like putting together an encyclopedia or an almanac, a, a guide in a sense, and you'll find it much easier to get your stories to go the distance. Number five, lastly, writing to your fan base, selling your concept to your fans. This is something that isn't just very vital today when selling a film or a TV pitch, but also something that I don't think was very apparent to me at all until I started playing more video games. And that is writing in a way that you hit your concept and your premise hard, fast, and often, and do not pull your punches. This is something that screenwriters often do perhaps without even realizing it because they feel Oh, it's too obvious. I want to be more subtle and under the radar. And it's because there's this fear of rejection that if I go all in on my concept, if I broadcast my premise from the tallest mountain or tower, people might hate it and think it's the stupidest idea in the world. A video game absolutely can't afford to pull its punches in this way. It usually goes all in because it's a little bit more marketing focused. And with transmedia competing with each other in the world that we live in today, the film and the TV world is starting to realize this as well. Your concept should be like a billboard advertising your brand to your fans. Sriracha flavored ice cream. There are gonna be people that think that is the stupidest idea I've ever heard of, pass. But then there are gonna be your constituents, your fans who will think Samurai Maidens, Lollipop Chainsaw, 
Japanese mermaid anime waifu simulator. Oh hell yes, sign me up. Where's this game been my entire life? And those are the people you should be writing for. When John Hughes wrote Ferris Bueller's Day Off, almost every studio hated that script. This is about the most annoying, smart-ass teenager who breaks the fourth wall and talks to us in this very condescending way. Yes, that's the experience, and that writer just went for it. Same thing with Quentin Tarantino and Reservoir Dogs. It was so gratuitously violent that a lot of his early detractors told him, if you go ahead with this movie, you're going back to that video store. If we look at the world of video games, Doom with its satirical machismo violence, the Souls game with their iconic, macabre, medieval difficulty, Blasphemous with its almost offensively iconoclast imagery, Resident Evil 7. Gamers literally complained about how terrified they were of that game that Ari Village made the decision to dial it back. Resident Evil 2 Remake, Mr. X was so anxiety inducing that it gave players genuine panic attacks. And now with the Callisto Protocols, Japanese version that was cancelled due to the game's excessive violent content and the rating it received. Video games rarely just go halfway on their concept when it comes to pleasing their fan base. They know their fan base, present and prospectus, and they hit them hard. They hit them fast, they hit them often, with the experience that they know their fans will love. And if you're a screenwriter writing for film and TV today, I believe it behooves you to train yourself to think along those same lines, i.e. play more video games. You see, your goal isn't to get people who are on the fence about your brand to maybe like it a little bit more, because they're not going to be true diehard fans anyways. Your biggest fear should be failing to deliver for the true fan base who would have freaking loved what you were going for had you not pulled your punches. On this channel, I often discuss storycraft in relation to video games when it comes to essential context, writing in conflict, the unifying emotional experience. But I think as writers, we often get so academic about storycraft that we forget what its purpose is, which is to excite our fans or potential fans, to get them on board and loyal to the brand that we're creating. The tools of storycraft are just there to help us in that regard. As often as people throw shade at Final Fantasy VII or Kingdom Hearts or Game of Thrones, Star Wars, comic books, anime, for being very fan servicey at times, sometimes to the detriment of somewhat alienating people who aren't already in that circle, they know what their fan base likes and they don't pull their punches. I am not exaggerating when I say that video game fans are 10 times more insane than film and TV fans, as many diehard crazy fans as there are of Game of Thrones or Star Wars. Just check out some of the reaction videos for Final Fantasy, Zelda, God of War, and Resident Evil, you know what I'm talking about. Video games are collectively a larger industry than film, TV, and music combined, and its fans are known for being very diehard loyal to their favorite IPs. Now, expanding and growing that fan base beyond its pre-existing fans is another matter, and that's when, yes, storycraft does matter more as far as hooking in complete strangers that will likely become diehard fans in the future. And that's where the, the juggling act of pandering to pre-existing fans versus bringing in newer fans comes into play, but that'll be for a later video down the line. So just to wrap things up, the skills you'll greatly improve on by playing more video games are number one, coming up with stronger concepts for your story. Number two, writing in external specific goals. Number three, conflict selection or strategic character and story design. Number four, world building skills. And number five, writing to your fan base. Hit your concept and premise hard, fast, and often. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Obviously, these are not the only things video games can help you improve on as a writer. Video games as a highly conceptual medium are a great way to train your conceptual skill sets. And just in terms of pure immersion, minus VR or maybe even the holodeck one day, there is no experience more immersive than playing video games. If you have any questions about any of these, please feel free to message me in the comment section below. This is a topic that I feel particularly energetic about. This transition that we're experiencing right now into more IP focused story worlds based transmedia content. And I'll be happy to answer your question the best I can.